Rub up your engines! Mark Williams says, Scott, you should have bought a car now or wait two or three years. All right, I'm going to put on my little hat and get a crystal ball out. I would probably say, if you got a decent car, wait. The short run, who knows what's going to go on? But like everything else, generally the prices get super sky high. They can't stay forever. Eventually, they plop back down. To give you an example, guy lived next door to me in Houston decades ago. He paid 400 grand for a house. Then when he didn't pay and it got foreclosed on him, that $400,000 house sold for $85,000 at an auction. It was the same house. There was nothing wrong with the guy to actually remodeled a bunch of it eventually prices come down might take a while but if you got a good car now there's no reason to get rid of it now because you're going to overpay unless you get a great deal like somebody dies in the family you inherit a car free with low mileage what the heck pick up on it i mean i bought my wife's 2002 lexus es 300 for three grand we had beautiful cars didn't need a car thought can't pass up on this well now you know 12 years later we're still driving it still runs like a clock so don't look a gift horse in the mouth rudy gets says should i shift into neutral waiting at a railroad crossing with a honda cvt like a regular automatic transmission to prevent heat buildup. CVTs are completely different types of transmissions. You don't want to be messing with that shifter. They work completely differently and truthfully, now they were JATCO transmissions that I saw it happen to, but I had customers put the JATCOs in neutral. They thought, well, it'll wear less. Well, they broke down just as fast, if not faster than a regular one. So the CVT, just leave it alone. Don't be fiddling with that. There's too much internal crap that can go wrong with them. Leave them in drive when you're driving. I mean, if you want to sit there for a long time, put the car in park, sure, and shut it off. You don't want to be shifting neutral drive back and forth on those CVTs. BL says, Scott, I got an 09 Highlander. One to two second rattle cold startup. Read it could be the oil actuator cost to repair. Read to try 0W40 full synthetic. Recommendations? All right. What can happen is, yes, the actuators can get a little stuck, and then it takes a little second for the oil pressure to build up so it doesn't rattle and it's tight. I fixed some with it, and it worked fantastic. My friend Bernie in Albuquerque, New Mexico, an oil cleaner. It's phenomenal. Phenomenal. Comes a little pint. What you do is you add it in an engine that's warmed up. Run it about 2,000 RPMs for 10 to 20 minutes. Then you change the oil and filter. That gets all the sludge out. Put in new oil. You could put in the full synthetic. The noise may go away. I've seen that fix them. The stick, see? You don't hear it on startup because it's sticking. Once it's running, the pressure builds up and try that. But on the other hand, I've also had customers who did nothing and they rattled like that for years just on the startup and they ran okay. So try the cleaner first. Tony Capizzi. Good morning, Scott. How often should you change the brake fluid in your car? Depends. How long do you keep your car? Brake fluid is phenomenally strong stuff, lasts a long time. If you're the type of guy that gets a new car every six, eight years, don't even waste your money. It won't wear out that fast. But as they age, it absorbs water vapor from the atmosphere, then the water corrodes the inside of the system. You could do it every seven, eight years or something like that if you wanted to. It's phenomenal fluid. It lasts a really long time. Eventually, yeah, things will break down. But if you don't keep your cars that long, you're really going to make any difference. You buy a new car, you don't even have to think about it. Seven, eight years old, go ahead if you want to. But I've even seen them 20 years old and they've never been touched and they still work perfectly fine. So, you know, you want to be a fanatic, change it every six, seven, eight years or so if you keep your cars forever. Ronald Osborne says, how do you know when a timing chain is broken on a 2012 Dodge Charger? It won't start or run. <laughs> the timing chain connects the crankshaft to the camshafts that open and close your valves. If the chain breaks, the car can't start because the valves don't open and close. It's that simple. Now, let's say yours is broken and somebody says that it's broken. The easiest thing to do is to just, your engine still cranks over, take the spark plugs out, put a compression tester in, you crank it, and it goes, ning, 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 ning. it's turning, but there's no compression because the valves aren't opening and closing. So, easy way to tell. BMRJ says, you know, 2016 stick Corolla, 222,000 miles. Had my original brakes checked by Toyota. The rear are okay and the front had to be changed. How long can original brakes go? Is this unusual? Well, it's normally unusual because most people stop and go a lot and they will wear the brakes out faster than that. But, if you do a lot of highway driving, that's not unusual at all. I had a customer with a Honda at 250. Brake pads still were okay and didn't need to be changed. You don't brake when you're driving on the highway unless you're really a terrible driver and you're going too fast, you got to keep slamming the brake on because you're going to run into people. You don't even use them. So you might go like 3,000 miles on a trip and only use the brakes for 10 or 15 minutes of that trip so they don't wear. Now stop and go. If you do all stop and go city driving, that's unbelievable that I went that far. <laughs> you're a real good driver and you conservatively brake. It all depends on how you brake. I had a customer in Houston. He wore his brakes out every 8,000 miles in his BMW and I watched him drive down the road and I noticed his brake light was on all the time. He was driving with his foot on the brake. He said, what well, they taught me do that. Cover the brake with your foot, they said. I said, they mean 
above it, hovering, not resting on it. D800 said, how much would it cost to have a 4.0 North Star engine restarted if I provided the head gasket set and restarting kit? It is a small fortune. That is a race design type engine. A lot of power. Zoom, zoom, zoom. A lot of torque, right? But when they break, man, they are one of the most expensive engines in the world to rebuild. And most guys won't touch them. Call around machine shops if you can find one. Most machine shops have gone out of business because when I was in Houston, all the ones that I knew were gone except for one and they did really crappy work in the end. They had guys who used to broom the floors with brooms rebuilding engines when the other guys left. It costs so much money to rebuild engines correctly, nobody wants to spend it. If somebody tells them, look, it's going to be eight grand to rebuild your engine, they go, I'll go get another car. If you can find a machine shop, ask them, but it's going to be big money if they know what they're doing. It is a job on that thing. Christian Augustin said, Scotty, what's your thoughts on Honda HRV Sports 2021? I think they're excellent vehicles. I've got customers and they love the vehicles. If you want a vehicle that size, with that amount of power and that amount of gas mileage, go out and buy it. They're excellent vehicles. Just like people say about the Toyota hatchback. If you like the car, buy it. They're excellent cars. Now, of course, they're all getting expensive, but they last so long, amortized over a 10 to 20 year period. And if you keep it that long, you'll say, gee, you know, if this car lasts me 20 years, it only costs me so much per year versus buying something like a Chrysler that in a 20 year period, you might have to buy six or seven of them. You're going to make up a lot more, pay a little bit more for a better car and keeping it forever. Blitz 2021 says, Scotty, Tesla or Edison, who do you admire most? <laughs> Both of them have so many pratfalls. I don't know if I'd say either of them. Thomas Edison was pretty much put a lot of things in his name that he had nothing to do with other than it was his company. Or if you remember, Tesla, who I admire more, he invented a lot of stuff. And Edison, he had originally worked for Edison. Anything he did there was an Edison patent because Edison said, you're working in my place. Those patents are mine. So, you know, they say Edison invented the motion picture camera. No, he didn't. The French guy did. And then he bought the patent from the French guy and pushed it out. So I can't say Tesla. Well, Tesla isn't a guy. That's a car company. You're probably talking about Elon Musk, right? Well, if you're talking about Elon on must. The man's a software genius. There's no arguing that. But when it comes to actually building things that are hardware, maybe not so great, you know? And he got some crazy science fiction ideas, maybe not so great, you know? I mean, if someone the other day, we're going to build these pods in space, they'll be miles long, and millions of people will live in them, and they'll love living in them. I don't love living in outer space in some pod, you know, with radiation coming in. Some of their stuff's a little bit on the squirrelier side, so I admire Albert Einstein, he was a character. He's a really smart guy, but he was also an interesting character. And he had some really great quotes. Watch some of those YouTube videos on great quotes of Albert Einstein. He was a very open-minded guy. He said the only thing really that made him better than anybody else was that he questioned everything. And I always questioned things. So I, I like him better. KG Bear says, the earth is flat. The problem with that is we have pretty good telescopes, right? But if you do get a telescope and try that, you'll find you can only see so many miles due to the curvature of the earth and you can't see anymore. So flat earthers, no, you know, I mean, we do have satellites flying around. You can see the things round. <laughs> Archer says, Scotty, love from Norway. Hey, you guys are doing pretty good in the Olympics there. Do you consider a 2015 Toyota Vensel, or 2015 horse hybrid, a good first car? I've seen a couple that are about 62,000 miles. I'm not particularly a hybrid fan, but Toyota makes probably the best hybrid cars out there. The hybrid Toyotas that I saw break all had anywhere between 160 and 300,000 miles on them. That's only got 62. There's a lot of life left on it. I don't know what your prices are like in Europe, though. They've gone insane in the United States and Canada. It all depends on what price you're going to pay. You know, here, people are actually paying more for those used ones than they can buy a new one for, so then people just stay back with it. I'll buy a new one. I don't know what it's like in Norway for that. I'm going to go there one day to see the northern lights. Although, from everything I read, you can set up a tour, but there's no guarantee that you're going to be able to see the lights at that particular time because they're temperamental. So I need to spend thousands of dollars and not get to see the stupid things. Number one, Headbanger says, Scotty got an 07 Matrix 5 speed with a weak throttle bearing. Have the clutch and everything. I'm going to change it out. How long of a job it is? Depends on how fast you are. I could do that job in probably two, two and a half hours because I have done thousands of clutches in my life. But take your time. Do it on a cold old car that sat overnight. You basically jack it up on two jack stands, get in there, start on bolt and everything, pull the transmission off. You don't have to take the transmission completely out. You just need to unbolt it and pull it back far enough that you can get the clutch plate and everything in. And make sure your kit has the tool. You need the tool that aligns the clutch. It's just plastic and it fits in the spline and then it's lined so when you bolt the clutch plate on, it's in the middle and not cockeyed, and you'll never be able to push the transmission back on. Make sure you have the clutch alignment tool. If you don't, get the tool before you do the job. Otherwise, it could take forever. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.